always stay professional. Very simple commandment here, always follow up. And this one's absolutely critical. I've seen so many landlords make a mistake in regards to commandment number four. Commandment number six, this is a big one. This is a really important one. You, you're gonna to need to write this one down. And finally, commandment number 10, and this one you need to always keep top of mind. What is up YouTube, Matt McKeever here, and in today's video, I'm gonna be sharing with you my 10 commandments when it comes to tenant communications. And now, this is actually a far more important subject matter than a lot of people realize. Far too often I find people having this confrontational approach to their tenants, and it's just, it's all backwards. It neither does you any good, it doesn't do your property or investment any good, and it definitely doesn't do your tenants any good either. So I'm hoping in today's video, by sharing with you my 10 commandments for tenant communication, that maybe you'll gain some clarity and become a better landlord or property manager, or if nothing else, some food for thought. So commandment number one, always stay professional. Very simple commandment here, but sometimes it can be a lot harder for us to abide by. So it's important that you understand that even if your tenant is becoming unprofessional, if they're becoming rude, if they're insulting, we should not just immediately drop down to their level. You need to always stay professional. You're the property owner, you're the business owner, you need to always be professional. Commandment number two, keep lines of communication open and clear. So it's so critical that you keep lines of communication open and clear with your tenants, but even more so, we need to make it very clear how our tenants can and should communicate with us. So ideally, you're gonna identify one communication channel. So what I don't want is my tenants text messaging me, leaving me phone messages or uh, voicemails, sending me emails, Facebook messages, and Instagram DMs. That, that's just a recipe for confusion, for misunderstandings, and for talking at cross purposes. So what we need to do as a landlord is be very clear and open about how our tenants should communicate with us. So if it's only email and text or phone, you need to let them know that. And again, this should be set out from day one. So we need to always be managing expectations from day one with our tenants and our tenancies. Commandment number three, no friend zone. So you can be friendly, but never friends with a tenant. And this is so critical. We need to have very clear boundaries. And again, from day one, we need to set expectations and manage those expectations. So by all means, be friendly, be nice to your tenants, but you can never become BFFs with them. This is a recipe for disaster and we need to keep separation from them. So again, we can be professional. We need to be clear with our communications, but no friend zone, be friendly, but never BFFs. Commandment number four, always follow up. And this one's absolutely critical. I've seen so many landlords make a mistake in regards to commandment number four. So after a tenant reports something or puts in a complaint or even just reaches out about a trivial matter, don't just let communication die off. Make sure you follow up and get clarity and a very clear understanding of whether the issue's been resolved. Just because the tenant messages you about a leak and then you send out a plumber and you never hear again from the tenant, don't just assume that that leak is fixed. So many landlords have been in for you know, terrible surprises because they just made an assumption. Now, I'm sure you've heard the saying before, what happens when you make an assumption, you make an ass out of you and me. So again, we can't just assume that things are going well. We need to clearly and specifically get feedback from our tenants. So if they reach out to us with a problem, we need to make sure that we close the loop and that we've got a clear resolution to whatever issue they reached out to us for in the first place. Commandment number five, stay in contact. So don't let more than three months go by without communication. Again, even if it's as simple as just a basic email or text message, just being like, hey, haven't heard from you in a while, hope everything's well, if there's any issues, let me know. But it's really important that we don't let months and months or years and years go by without communicating with our tenants. Again, this is a recipe for disaster. I've seen it happen so often where people allow communication with tenants, with customers, with friends, with business partners, it doesn't matter, but they let that cadence of communication fall by the wayside. And eventually what happens if we're not clearly communicating with the other parties, they're gonna start telling themselves their own stories about us. And usually, well, almost always, those stories are never gonna be more pleasant than reality about you. So it's much more important we get in front of that and we actually share the real life narrative. So it doesn't matter whether you've got good news, bad news, or no news, 
We need to always stay in clear communication with our tenants, and I encourage you don't let more than three months go by without at least just a simple touching base. Commandment number six. This is a big one. This is a really important one. You, you're going to need to write this one down. Company policy, no exceptions. So have a clear set of guidelines or policies for common situations and always follow them. It's nothing personal, just company policy. This is going to save you from so much friction, from so much drama, from so much hassle of being a landlord. Far too often people set out clear expectations or clear guidelines, but then they compromise on them immediately. Hey, I know I'm supposed to pay rent on the 1st, but I'm just running a bit late. Is it cool if I pay on the 7th? Yes, absolutely, no problem, but I'm still going to have to file the N4 notice because you're late on your rent payment on the 2nd of the month. That's company policy, no exceptions. But hey, wait, no, like I'm totally going to pay it on the 7th. Awesome, great. If you paid on the 7th, that'll essentially void the N4. But again, our company policy with no exceptions is to issue that N4 if you're behind on your rent. Again, it's really important that we make it very obvious to our tenants that none of this is personal. It's just a company policy, but you're not in a position to make any exceptions. And now you may be thinking, but I'm very hands-on with my tenants. You know, I'm, I'm one of those hands-on landlords. I know my tenants really well, and I don't want to be a jerk, and I don't want to come off as mean, this and the other. Understand that even if you're able to manage that relationship well, what you're doing is not creating a scalable solution to your business model. Can you really hand off that personal relationship someday to a manager? Can you hand it off to an employee? Can you hand it off to a property manager? If the answer is no, then what you're currently implementing is not a business system, right? It's really important that you guys understand this because I see so many landlords create their own landmines that they then step into because they don't have clear policies or they don't follow their own clear policies. Commandment number seven, be detailed in all communication, state specific dates, times, and reasons for any disruptions, any notices, or any issues that are currently going on in regards to the property. So again, we need to always be detailed in our communications. One of my biggest pet peeves is when someone takes two emails to accomplish something that could have been said in one email, or when they take two phone calls to accomplish something that could have been done with one phone call or one text message. But it's up to us as landlords, again, to always stay professional and always be very clear in our communications. So if you need to gain access to a tenant's unit, even if they've said, hey, just swing by anytime, don't even worry about giving me a text message, like it's no big deal, I'm still going to follow the right procedures. Because again, company policy, no exceptions. Circling back to our previous commandment. So it's really important that you're detailed in all your communications, and this is just gonna save you a world of trouble if down the road there's ever a dispute or misunderstanding. Understand that a lot of people don't set out with bad intentions, but our memory can play quite a number of tricks on us, and people can misremember or re-remember a situation completely different than anyone else that also experienced that same situation. So when we're very clear and detailed with our written communications, it makes life so much easier. Commandment number eight, manage expectations from day one. Have a property or unit binder or rules with clear expectations. Again, this all comes back to managing those expectations from day one that we touched upon earlier. We need to be clear with our communications and we need to manage expectations. One of the best ways to manage expectations is literally have like a house binder. Now, these days it doesn't actually need to be a binder. This could be a G drive or a Dropbox folder you share with the tenant. But in there, you can have very clear detailed instructions for almost any situation. And even better yet, you can also include a lot of the common things a tenant may want. Have a complicated fridge or stove? Scan, scan that manual and just put it up there in the cloud. That way they can always access it. They can never lose it, you can never lose it, it can never be destroyed. Just give them that shareable link to that folder. And again, in that folder, we should also have very clear steps and procedures for them for a lot of common issues. If they're responsible for cha changing the furnace filter, why not have the exact furnace filter and where they can find it and what's the normal price for it? Or have an Amazon link to it right away. Again, there's a lot of things we can do to make our lives easier as landlords, but it just takes a moment for us to sit down and get clarity about how we can manage those expectations from day one. Commandment number nine, written communication is always better than verbal. So many landlords fall victim to this that it's cliche at this point. Just get everything in writing, especially anything that's important has to be done in writing. I don't care. If you're doing cash for keys, 
That absolutely has to be in writing, guys. And finally, commandment number 10, and this one you need to always keep top of mind. Remember, tenants are your customers. And like any business, if you find yourself for too long being confrontational with your customers, you're not gonna be in business for much longer. So it's really important that we treat them with respect and that we work with them. If you're constantly at odds, if you're at loggerheads with your tenants, eventually you're not gonna end up in this business. And so it's really important that you keep top of mind at all times, tenants are your customers. Now, if your business is growing so big or you've got so many other businesses or maybe a full-time job, if you can't keep um, that top of mind and you can't keep managing expectations and clear lines of communications open with your tenants, eventually your business is gonna crumble and you're gonna find yourself in a lot of pain unless you can outsource and hand off the day-to-day -day management. But no matter what, whether it's you or one of your employees or an outsourced third-party property management firm, remember, your tenants are your customers. All right, guys, that's it for my 10 commandments when it comes to tenant communications. I hope you guys got value from this video. If you did, smash that like button, hit the subscribe button if you're new to my channel. Let me know in that comment section down below, what other commandments do you think I should have added to my list of 10 here, or did, do you think I hit it perfectly? Let me know, comment section down below. I'll see you guys in the next video.